Hey everybody, Mr. Grove here. Today we're going to journey through a couple of the worm phylums, the flatworms and the roundworms. So we'll start with the flatworms. That's going to be phylum platyhelminthes. And you can kind of remember that plat rhymes with flat. Uh, so some of the key factors of phyla, the phylum platyhelminthes, uh, we have now reached bilateral symmetry. So uh, our sponges, periphera, had no symmetry. Our nadarians had a radial symmetry. And now we're bilateral, and that's going to pretty much stay with us through the duration of the animal kingdom, with a, a minor exception in the echinoderms. Um, we've got a very flat body, and so that flat body is going to um, allow um, an access to the environment. So we've got a high surface area, and so basically you don't have to transport stuff very far in the body to get to the outside. Um, we also got a meso derm tissue layer on the inside so that's right here in red um, and but notice there's no opening so we don't have a coelom so these would be acelomates um, we also have some minor organ formation and some of these guys can be freshwater or saltwater um, so typically our saltwater is going to be a little more colorful like some of these turbal areas and then our freshwater is going to be a little bit more earth tones like our planaria and then of course, uh, free swimming or parasitic. We've got some of both. So that's kind of um, what we got. We'll start with the class Turbularia. So most of these guys are going to be oceanic, uh, marine, except for the planaria. And so planaria are going to be these little guys. They're about the size of your pinky fingernail. Um, they've got these little eye spots um, that can sense, uh, photo, basically are photosensitive. They can sense light. Um, and we have some very simple organs. So we got a simple brain, we got simple circulatory and excretory, female and male reproductive. Um, the one thing we don't really have is uh, we don't have a complete digestive. So we're still gastrovascular cavity. So the mouth here uh, is also going to be the pooper, basically. So the food will come in, get digested, uh, and then will be expelled out. Uh, these little guys are scavengers. They live in fresh water. They kind of like the moving water a little bit better than the stagnant water. Um, they're really good at regenerative abilities. So, you know, if you're missing a tail tip, they'll regrow. Uh, sometimes they can even regrow like a partial head. So who knows where the future would hold in that ability for our medical science. So um, that is the flatworm class turbal area. Um, the oceanic ones are a little bit bigger, kind of about the size of your hand. Uh, again, these, these guys are good guys. They're scavengers just trying to find food and keep from being food. Uh, the tapeworms are going to be the class Cestoda. So these guys are parasitic. Um, they've got this really nasty little hook-like end that uh, attaches them inside your intestine called a scolex. Um, and you just can't get these things out without some sort of medicinal treatment. Um, so they will slowly expand the life cycle kind of goes something like this so uh, if you ingest cysts either through contaminated food or water or undercooked pork is a, is a common cause um, then they will uh, the cysts will get in to your digestive will slowly start to add sections and these sections are called proglottids um, and then at the end then those proglottids will break off and then be released through the anus and then uh, they can live for a day or two on their own, um, but then they'll dry up into other cysts. And so hopefully for the tapeworm, the life cycle would be passed along then. Uh, so these guys are mostly parasitic. Um, they can get really big, um, you know, several feet long, um, but they're very thin uh, and ribbon-like in their body form. So that's the class Cestoda. And then our class Trematoda is going to be the flukes. So these guys are also parasitic. They're going to be a little bit more coin-shaped rather than ribbon-shaped. Um, they've got this thick covering that helps them survive a little bit called a tegument. Um, and these guys are responsible for diseases like schistomyosis. Um, so schistomyosis is very common. I think we looked it up in class, and uh, there's a, about 140 million people that have it in the, United, or in the world uh, today. So definitely in third world, tropical kind of countries where there's a lot of water exposure. Um, so a human might be standing in water, like in a rice paddy or something. Uh, if they've got openings on their feet, the larva can get directly in there. Um, or what will happen is then the cysts will get into the snails. The snail larva, uh, the snails will breed the larvae. 
and the larvae will release from the snail and go towards maybe a fish and get in the tissue of the fish. And then if you eat an undercooked fish, then you could be ingesting the uh, liver fluke larva uh, yourself. So that's kind of the life cycle. Also bad guys, and these are the trematodes, so the other class. Um, believe it or not, not always have we thought that these were bad. Uh, so here's an example of a 1920s uh, advertisement where they thought tapeworms were a good thing. Hey, you can eat all you want um, and not gain any weight. What's so bad with that? Um, but anytime you potentially block that intestinal tract, uh, bad things could happen. So I would say stick with the treadmill. Um, moving on to our next phylum, then we have the roundworms. And so the roundworms are gonna be phylum nematoda. Uh, lots of species, so you know that's a ballpark number of 12,000, but there's a lot of species, ranging anywhere from several inches in size to microscopic. Um, some key features, we've got a pseudocelum now, so there is a gap for the fluid uh, filled cavity, but it's just not completely covered in mesoderm, so it's a pseudocelum. Uh, these guys have a little cuticle epidermis that helps kind of give them some shape. Uh, but the biggie is this guy right here. We now have a complete digestive tract. So we have a, two openings, a mouth and a pooper. So the food will go one directional through that. And that pretty much stays with us the entire rest of the animal kingdom. Um, they have long muscles that cause their body to kind of whip back and forth. So in fact, we have a species of roundworm called whipworms. Uh, a lot of these are microscopic. A lot of them are found in wet soil. Uh, and you got to be careful going barefoot uh, too much because uh, you can pick up some of these if you have some openings on your feet. Um, some common ones, Ascarius uh, is a common roundworm, and these are pretty much all parasitic, so pigs and humans. Uh, pig organs are very similar to human organs in size and shape. And so, you know, a lot of pig diseases humans can also get, and that's why we got to cook your pork all the way through. Uh, Trichinellus spirillus, so that's our trichinosis. Nicator would be hookworms, and then Toxic Canis, Toxic Cati. So when uh, women become pregnant, one of the very first things their doctor is going to ask them is, "Do you have a cat? And if so, is it inside? And if so, you are no longer on litter box changing duty because those spores can get into uh, your system and can really cause some problems with pregnancies. So, um, but probably the most common um, roundworm is heartworm. And so heartworm shows up in pets. Um, it's actually transferred by a mosquito. So when a mosquito bites a heartworm animal and flies over and bites a healthy animal, it can transfer that. Um, and it's relatively easy to prevent. There's heartworm prevention medicines um, that you can put your pet on monthly. Uh, a lot of times they'll combo that with tick and flea medicines. And so uh, that's definitely the best way. If they do get it, you can treat it. It's a little trickier. But if left untreated, uh, those roundworms will basically deteriorate the heart tissue um, and will probably cause the animal to die of heart failure. So those are two of our worms, the flat and the round. And don't forget to smash that like button because I hope that was helpful.